shouts of joy to be heard to resound in the camp of the righteous can we just make a shout of joy in this place come on celebrate jesus
census that all the world should be registered. The census, the census first took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria. So all went to be registered, everyone to his own city. Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea, the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and the lineage of David. He went to be registered with Mary, his betrothed wife, who was with a child. So it was that while they were there, the days were completed for her to be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. Now there were in the same country shepherds living out in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were greatly afraid. Then the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be the sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in the manger. Silent night. Oh. Round you on the 
Moses said to one another, let us go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has come to pass, which the Lord has made known to us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the baby in the manger. Now when they had seen him, they made widely known the same which was told to them concerning the child. And all those who heard it marveled at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. Then the shepherds returned, returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen. Light of the world, you stepped down into darkness. Open my eyes, let me see. Beauty that made this heart adore you.
glorify your name. Thank you for your power this morning. Thank you for your presence that gives peace in our hearts. In the name of Jesus, that the Prince of Peace is born today. We shall be peaceful in the name of Jesus. We receive your peace, eternal Father. And we pray that your blessings will flow upon your people in the name of Jesus. We thank you and we bless you. In Jesus' name we pray. Christmas, we thank God for each one of you, and we are going to have a word from God, and I believe this word will not leave you the same again. Please have your seats even uh, as we begin the uh, preaching of God's word in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Has the Lord been good to you? Amen, amen, amen. Can you believe you are in December? In December, 2021, December. Somebody say hallelujah. Turn to your neighbor and tell them you made it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The Lord is faithful. And I believe you will finish this year very strong. And you will get to 2022 to the glory of God. Somebody say hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. We are going to read from the book of Luke. Chapter 2, and I begin from verse 8 to verse 15. The book of Luke, chapter 2, if you can get there, and we begin from verse 1. Verse 8, chapter 2, verse 8. Father, this is your word for us, your people. I pray in the name of Jesus that you bring it forth with power and authority. Thank you that you are in this place. Thank you, Prince of Peace. Thank you, Mighty God. Thank you, Wonderful Counselor. Thank you, King of Glory, that today as we celebrate and remember the day that you are born, we give you glory for your goodness, your faithfulness, even in our lives. Thank you for saving our lives and we pray that now you speak to us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So, verse 8, we begin Luke chapter 2 from verse 8. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were so afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the baby wrapped in a swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying glory to God in the highest and on earth peace goodwill toward man and it came to pass as the angels were gone away from them into heaven the shepherds said to one another let us now go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which is come to pass, which the Lord has told unto us. 
Somebody say hallelujah. Glory to God. Allow me to speak to us this morning on the night that ended the long wait. The night that ended the long wait. Waiting, people of God, is not an easy thing to do. There are those who can wait patiently in their lives until they receive whatever they were promised or whatever appointment they had. But there are those people who struggle with waiting. Waiting is not an easy thing to do. The Bible gives pictures of people who waited and waited and waited well until the fulfillment of the promise that was made unto them. One of these people is a man called Simeon. Simeon, in the same book we have read, it talks of him as a man who was righteous and devout unto the Lord. And the Holy Spirit was upon Simeon. And he had revealed it to him that he will not die until he saw the consolation of Israel. The consolation of Israel that the Bible talks about is the birth of Jesus Christ. And when Jesus was born, the parents brought him to the temple to dedicate him. Simeon walked towards the parents and looked at the baby and blessed the baby. And he said, Lord, you may now dismiss your servant in peace, for I have seen the salvation of Israel. This man waited for years and years in the temple until the day the Lord fulfilled the consolation of Israel. On the other hand, there are men in the Bible who did not wait well. They were impatient and they took matters in their own hands. They took shortcuts because waiting was not easy and is not easy even today. One of them is Abraham and Sarah. The Bible says God promised them and he said he will give them a son out of the loins of Abraham. But people of God, Abraham waited for some time and Sarah waited for the promise of the son and it was taking time to come. And when they realized that they were not patient enough, they were not waiting enough, the Bible says Sarah suggested to Abraham to take one of their maid servants and become his wife. That was a shortcut. They did not wait. So the Bible gives pictures of people who waited patiently and people who took a shortcut because waiting is not easy. We wait for different things in our lives. We wait for breakthrough in our prayer when we have sought the face of God and presented our petitions before God. We wait on him to come through for us, to answer our prayers. We wait on promotions at our places of work. We wait on our businesses to pick up and to expand. And for those who are not yet married, we wait for the Mr. Right and the Miss Right. And after we have waited for them to come, we get to another stage where we wait for the children to come. In life, you will get to a place where you wait for something. But sometimes, people of God, the waiting may take long. And when it takes long, the passion to wait, the spirit to continue waiting goes away. And you don't want to wait again. You become impatient. You become discouraged because it's taking longer than you thought it would. Earlier this year, I traveled out for work and I knew I was going to stay for about three to four weeks. But when I left, I didn't inform the children, I told them I'm traveling, but I'm not sure. I didn't tell them when I'll be coming. Thank God for the Zoom. The technology so when I got there it was going to be three weeks I got there and we were working but in the evening we'll do the zoom meeting and we'll greet each other they'll be happy to see their dad the dad will be happy to see the children we did that for the first week 
And then the second week, their passion that the Zoom meeting is coming up weighed off. Actually, I will set up the meeting Zoom and call them to let them know that we'll be having a family meeting. But one by one, they began to take off. One of them was courageous and he said, I am not coming. And I asked, why? She has this phrase to show that you are taking too much time to come. And she said, because you are taking for long. Because she waited for the first week and she thought it was three days, it was four days, and then I'll be home. When I took more than a week, then she didn't want even to come for Zoom because according to her phrase, I was taking for too long. And therefore, her patience and even her passion to come for the meeting ended there. She will only come and say hi and hi and she goes, but nothing else because I insisted she has to come. I want you to understand, child of God, but the workings of God are different. When we wait as children of God to the things that God has promised to do in our lives, no matter how long it takes, if we are patient, we will see the fulfillment of the promises of God. I come to let you understand that don't give up don't give up. Don't be discouraged. If the Lord promised to do it, he will do it at the appointed time. Somebody say hallelujah. It may take long, but when God has made a promise, keep on waiting. Don't lose your, your patience. Keep on waiting. If the Lord said he will do it, he will do it at the appointed time and he will not miss it. Prophet Habakkuk, in the book of Habakkuk 2.3, he says, For the vision is yet for appointed time. At the end it shall speak, it shall not lie. It may tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come to pass. So the promises that God makes for his people, they are not in vain. We wait on them. If we don't give up, we will receive them at the appointed time. Somebody say hallelujah. In the text that we have read, the Bible brings to the picture the shepherds who were outside in the field watching after the sheep. For ages and for years, they have been hearing that things will get better when the Messiah is born. But for years and decades, people of God, the Messiah has not come. It has been 500 years when the prophet made a prophecy and he said, a son shall be born and he shall be called Emmanuel, God with us. He will be the Messiah to deliver you from bondage. So they have been hearing this message of a Messiah being born. It has been 500 years. They haven't heard anything else and they keep on waiting. But when you look at them in the field, they are discouraged. Why? The Romans have ruled them with a strong hand. The Romans have mistreated them. The Romans have controlled them. The Romans have overtaxed them for years. They are in a state of hopelessness, a state of despair, a state of emotionless. Nothing moves them anymore because they have waited for all this time, but they are not seeing anything. But one night, the night that Christ was born, something happened. Something changed in the land of Israel. The angel of God appeared to the shepherds in the field and the glory of God shone around them. People of God, this is the glory of God. They had waited for years to see, but it was not coming. And this time round, the glory of God is shining around them. And they thought that the armies of the Romans have come to capture them. But the angel said, do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will be bring joy to the land of Israel. Good news that will change things around in the land of Israel. I want you to understand that there is a night that God changed 
the history of Israel. The same God can change your situation tonight, today. The same God can turn things around for you to the glory of God. Somebody say hallelujah. Have you been in the waiting room waiting for God to come through for you? Have you been in the waiting room waiting for God to answer your prayer? The Lord is saying this morning, get ready for something new is about to happen in your life. Get ready for something is going to change in your life. Things are not going to, re to remain the same as it was in the land of Israel when the angels appeared to the shepherds who were out in the field. In your day, in your waiting room, God is about to appear. He's about to bring change. He's about to speak a word that will transform your life from darkness into light, from mourning into joy, from weeping into singing. For God does not disappoint his people. Somebody say hallelujah. In the waiting room, God can still change things. Somebody say hallelujah. You see people of God, this was an ordinary night for the shepherds doing their ordinary work, taking care of the sheep. What they did not know is that as they were taking care of the sheep in the field, Joseph and Mary were taking care of the baby in the manger. And in the same way, God was about to take care of the history of Israel in the skies. I want you to understand that as they looked at it and saw it was an ordinary day, an ordinary night, when the angel appeared to them. It was a normal night, an ordinary night, just like the other night that they had done their ordinary work. But when God stepped into their ordinary lives, he changed that night into an extraordinary night when he was about to change the history of Israel. When he was about to change the people and bring the change that they had desired in their lives. In our normal days, in our ordinary days, when we do the ordinary things that we do, there is a God, when we allow him to step into our lives, he changes our ordinary lives. He changes our ordinary days and brings the desires of our hearts and answers the prayers that we have been praying for. And he comes through for us as we have been waiting for him to come through for us. I want you to understand it may be an ordinary day like the other day but do not be confined to the ordinariness of life where you don't expect the extraordinary I want you to know your God is a God of extraordinary he adds something to the ordinary he changes that which is normal to supernatural he changes that which is ordinary to extraordinary when he steps in your life things will not remain the same he will shake the foundations of the earth and answer the prayer that you have been waiting on him to answer his name his name is Jehovah Rapha. His name is the bright morning star. He's the king of glory. He's the Lord of lords. He is an extraordinary God. May that be your God even today in Jesus' name. Somebody say hallelujah. And God is challenging you today. Trust him for extraordinary doors. Trust him for extraordinary levels. Trust him for extraordinary relationship. Trust him for extraordinary offices. For what is impossible with man, it is possible with God. May that be your God today in Jesus' name. Somebody say hallelujah. God of the extraordinary when he stepped into the field of the shepherds, things changed the people of God. They did not remain the same. It's the same God who can step into your normal day, your ordinary day, your ordinary place of work, your ordinary marriage, and change it to extraordinary because he is a God of extraordinary. When the angels appeared, these guys, the shepherds, were terrified. You see, they were living in a world of uncertainty. They were not sure 
what the Romans would wake up one morning and do to them or say to them. But when the angel appeared, so they were afraid, thinking perhaps the Romans have decided to confiscate our animals. But the angel said, do not be afraid. Today, in the city of David, a savior has been born to you. A savior has been born to you. In the, in the, in the town of David, a savior has been born to you. And this shall be of great joy to the whole land of Israel. Are you seeking for joy? Our joy is in the Lord Jesus Christ. The fulfillment of our joy is found in Christ Jesus. The night that Jesus was born ended the long wait. And this is how it ended the long wait. It ended the long wait for our Savior. They were waiting for our Savior for years, for decades, and for centuries for some. Until this time, people of God, sin and the power of sin had ruled the world. The hearts of men were darkened by sin. The light of God was not shining as he expected it to shine in the hearts of people because sin controlled them. Darkness ruled over the hearts of people and the lives of people. But the prophet had seen this day and he said, the people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has shone on them. I want you to understand, Christ Jesus is the light of the world that shines and darkness cannot comprehend it. When the angel brought the message, it ended the long wait for the Savior who will light up the world and bring hope where there was no hope. And therefore the Savior came that he may bring light to the nations of the world. As we live here today as Gentiles, we are glad to be part of the kingdom of God because even the Gentiles have a position, have inheritance in the kingdom of God. I am glad that he was born on this night because my sins have been taken away. My pain has been taken away. I waited for a savior, but today I can sing for joy. I have a friend in Christ Jesus who takes away every sin who removed every darkness out of my life I will not walk in darkness for the light of God has shone upon my life may the light of God shine upon your life clear the way for you clear the path for you in Jesus name for the Bible say the light has come and the darkness cannot comprehend it may every darkness that was raised against your life may it be broken by the light of God the son of David is born in the city of Bethlehem today we shall not live in darkness for the light of God has come to our lives somebody say hallelujah Shout and say, that's my God. Hallelujah. They waited for a savior. And on that night that Christ was born, the long wait for a savior came to an end. For a savior was born to save them from the life of hopelessness, the life of darkness, the life of pain. He came to set them free in Jesus name. That night ended the long wait for hope. Ended the long wait for the savior. It also ended the long wait for hope. You see, there was a sense of hopelessness amongst the people of Israel. And it is represented by the shepherds who are outside taking care of the sheep. As a matter of fact, the people of God the shepherds were not so highly regarded at this particular time. In the days of David, they were highly regarded. Actually, the writer of the Psalms talks of God as his shepherd. But at this particular time, these shepherds were given to take care of the sheep that were meant to be sacrifices in the temple. As they took care of the sheep, 
Some of them were accused of being robbers or being cons who would take advantage of the sheep given to them and eat or sell. And therefore they were considered misfits in the society. But as they were out there, the messenger from heaven appeared to the angels. He does not go, he appears to the shepherds. He didn't go to the mighty and the allied, but he also went to the, to the lowly and those who are considered misfits in the society. We have a God who is the God of the mighty and the God of the lowly. It doesn't matter where you are in this life. There is a God who treats you like a valuable soul in his presence. Whether you are low or high, his name came that you may be saved and be rescued from the power of sin. And therefore the shepherds were out there. They represented hopelessness. But when Jesus, the messenger appeared, the angel appeared to them, he, did, he told them of the hope that was going to occur in their lives. The disconnect that was there between man and God. The angel said, Jesus came to reconnect the people of God back to their God. Sin had disconnected them. Disobedience had disconnected them. They had no hope. But when Jesus came, he became a bridge between God and man. Though man may not suffer because his God is about to deliver him from a state of hopelessness. Jesus Christ brings hope where there is no hope. Are you in your life facing hopeless situation and about to give up? I want you to understand that the peace of God, the joy of God, the hope of God is found in Christ Jesus. Somebody say hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. So the people of Israel, as much as they were robbed the peace, external peace by the Romans, also the internal peace of connection with God, they did not have it. It is Jesus who came and connected them back to God. He gave them the peace they needed. He gave them the joy they needed. He gave them the, the, the hope they needed. Because once you are connected with God, you are connected to life. Somebody say hallelujah. And finally, people of God, this night, the night that Jesus was born, he, it introduced a friend to the world. Jesus is a friend both to the sinners and the saints. He stood before the people and told them, I have not come to judge the world, but to save the world. I have been sent to the sick as a physician to give them health. So Jesus is a friend both to the saints and to the sinners. At one time, he was with his disciples and he spoke to them and said, from this time onward, I do not call you my servants, but I call you friends. Servants do not, not know what the master is doing. But as for me, I have informed you everything that I'm about to do as my father told me. And therefore he told the people, I am your friend. I have come to rescue you, to help you from the bondage of sin, to bring you to a place of peace and a place of joy. Today, I want you to understand that Jesus is a friend to the high, to the lowly. He's a friend to the saints and to the sinners. If you have not made him your friend today, Try him today. If you have never made him to be a friend in your life, give him a chance today and you will never regret him. He will pick you from the place of pain and put you in a place of peace. He will pull you from a place of burdens and put you in a place of freedom. Receive this friend who came to set people free from their sin and the bondage of sin. His name is Jesus Christ. He's the friend of the world. A friend to the sinners and a friend to the saints. Will you please stand on your feet? The night that Christ was born, it ended the long wait 
that was there in the land of Israel. Today, people of God, he's no longer in the manger. He is the king of kings. He is the son of God who rescued, healed, delivered, set free, who was put on the cross. He died, but on the third day, he arose. He's not in the grave. He's alive today. This same baby that was put in the manger, he's coming again. And he does not come again like a baby. He comes like a king. He comes like a judge to judge people and to gift people. I want you to understand the next time we are meeting with Jesus, he will not be in the manger. He will be sitting in the throne of his glory at the right hand side of the Father. Have you made him your friend in your life? Give him a chance if you have not. And one day you will be with him in glory. And let's celebrate the Lord and thank him for his goodness, his faithfulness, his love, his mercies that are new each and every day. So as we celebrate Christmas today, we remember the night that Jesus was born ended the long way. May whatever you have been waiting for come through for you in Jesus' name. For he answers prayers. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for your people today. We thank you that the night that you were born, you ended the long wait for a Savior. We are not waiting for a Savior anymore. For Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, has been born. And we receive salvation. We receive freedom. We receive the blessings of God in the name of the Lord. We thank you and I pray for your people as they trust you and wait on you. Father, come through for them in the name of Jesus. Those who are seeking open doors, come through for them. Those who are seeking for opportunities, come through for them. Those who are asking for chances, answer their prayers. We thank you and we bless you in Jesus name we pray amen amen celebrate the king of glory Lord of gods his name is Jesus his name is Jesus hallelujah somebody say amen, amen. somebody shout and say amen. amen the night that Christ was born it ended the long wait may your waiting end now in Jesus name Glory to God. May we have our seats for a while. A few announcements. <clears throat> Tomorrow being Sunday, we shall be here again. Today is Saturday. Tomorrow is Sunday. So tomorrow Sunday, we are here. Today is Christmas service. Tomorrow is no more uh, Sunday service. So we meet at 1030. 10.30, a short service, and then we'll be done for the day. Remind your people, those who uh, may think will not be having the service, you are having the service tomorrow, and we are looking forward to see you tomorrow in Jesus' name. Tomorrow being the last Sunday of the year, it is going to be a Thanksgiving Sunday. Somebody say hallelujah. Celebrate the Lord for his goodness. His goodness, the devil thought will not the end this year, but we are coming to the end of 2021, healthy, strong, and blessed. Somebody say amen. So tomorrow is going to be a Thanksgiving Sunday. And since it's a Thanksgiving Sunday, on top of our normal offering, our tithes and our offering, please come with a Thanksgiving offering to thank God for his goodness, his faithfulness. Since January, all through to December, he has been faithful to each one of us. And I know you have testimonies, you are thankful to God, and we want to bring a thanksgiving tomorrow in the service. I'm going to ask the ushers to come up with the envelopes, please, so that we get each one of us an envelope for the thanksgiving offering tomorrow in Jesus' name. The ushers will be giving it, passing it all to each one of you so that you get an opportunity to say thanks to God with an offering of thanksgiving. And we'll see you tomorrow in the service in Jesus' name.
So we have taken a break from the Zoom meetings and services, but very soon we are coming back. And when we are ready to get back to the Zoom fellowship meetings, we will let you know so that you can join in in Jesus' name. But for now, it is time to give to the Lord. Let's celebrate the King of glory even as we give our tithes, our offerings in Jesus' name. Glory to God. Let me pray for our giving today. Loving Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for you are a faithful and loving God. We thank you for your blessings upon our lives. And today, King of glory, as we give, we give an honor and a, and, and a thanksgiving to honor you for the blessings that you have released upon our lives. I pray that you bless the gift and bless the giver. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Please go ahead and give. If you are giving via the, the pay bill, the pay bill number is on the screen. Let's all go ahead and give in Jesus' name. service starts at 10 30 let's keep time so that uh, we get a good time in the presence of God and then we go back to our normal duties remember 31st we will have a, a crossover Kesha overnight meeting 31st which will be on uh, Friday on Friday night we are here for a crossover service don't miss, don't miss. The Lord has given a word to our bishop who will want to share with us. So make sure you attend the service and the Lord will bless you in Jesus' name. Will you please stand if you have given so that we can share the benediction. And if you are giving via the online uh, uh, numbers, go ahead and give even as we pray and the Lord shall bless you. Hallelujah. Turn to your neighbor and wish them uh, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year in Jesus' name. That the Lord will bless you and make you cross over being strong, blessed, and ready for what is about to do in 2022. Amen, amen, amen. Loving Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for your people. And I pray for your blessings upon them that as they go, may the Spirit of God go before them to clear the path for them, to bless them and to make them stronger than their competitors. I bless each one of you and I pray that the Lord God Almighty shall be your portion today and forevermore. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You are blessed. Have a wonderful day of Christmas in Jesus' name. Amen.